and we're going to bring Alex and Gray in. They are competing in part three of the final head of household. Whoever wins will cast the final vote to evict of the game. Uh, Kaylee is going to be standing by backstage. She's the other member of the final three. And um, I can see your comments. So if you're watching, hopefully you're going to enjoy the show tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. And let's bring on the, the two people competing in part three, Gray Price and Alex Day. How are you, boys? Hello, hello. Um, each question is – the jury took a survey, and each question is regarding the answers that the jury gave. Um, so – uh, you're going to get one question about each juror. There's currently eight jurors, so there's eight questions. If we have a tie, we'll have a tiebreaker question to follow. Whoever scores the most points is the final HOH. Does that make sense? For the tiebreaker, can we play C4? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. When asked what he valued most as a juror, Quinn said, A, competition wins, B, deception. Don't reveal until I ask. When asked what he valued most as a juror, Quinn said, A, competition wins, B, deception. All right, I'm going to need you to reveal in three, two, one. You both said B, you're both correct. Question number two. When asked his big, biggest regret in the game, Shane said, A, giving my Alex my pendants, or B, lying to too many people. When asked his biggest regret in the game, Shane said, Shane said, giving my, oh my gosh, I can't talk. Giving Alex my pendants or B, lying to too many people. I need you to reveal in three, two, one. You both said A, you're both correct. Two apiece. Question number three. When asked what his favorite competition was, Nathan said, A, Scategories, B, Balderdash. For the record, he won both of these. All right. Need your answers in three, two, one. Gray said A. Alex said B. The correct answer is A. Categories. Gray, you take the lead. Three to two. Question number four, I believe. Yes, number four. When asked his biggest regret of the game, Robbie said A. Trusting Alex. B. Trusting Connor. His biggest regret, Robbie said A. Trusting Alex. B. Trusting Connor. I need you to reveal in three, two, one. Both said B, both are correct. When Trey was asked to describe his Big Brother hometown's experience in a word, he said A, entertaining, B, thrilling. When Trey was asked to describe his BBH experience in a word, he said A, entertaining, B, thrilling, and need you to reveal in three, two, one. You both said A, you're both correct. When asked who was robbed, Daryl said, A. Shane, B. Quinn. When asked who was robbed, Daryl said, A. Shane, B. Quinn. Need you to answer in three, two, one. You both said B. You're both correct again. And we're heading into question seven. Two questions left. Gray is still up six to five. When asked what his favorite part of the game was, Thomas said, A. Getting fourth place. B. Meeting people. When asked his favorite part of the game, Tom said, getting fourth place or B, meeting people. Need to reveal in three, two, one. Gray said A, getting fourth place. Alex said B, meeting new people. We have a tie game. Alex is correct. Going into the final question. We are tied. When asked who the least trustworthy person in the game was, Connor said... A, Robbie, or B, himself? When asked who his least tr trustworthy player in the game was, Connor said A, Robbie, B, himself. Need your reveal in three, two, one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Is that what you meant to say, Alex? No. Do you want it? That one. Is that what you want? Yeah. Okay, we're locked in. We both said B, himself. And you're both wrong. He said Robbie. I was literally looking at the answer and I was like, oh yeah, that's what I want to hold up. Oh, okay. for, the t for the tiebreaker, I have a question that has a numeric answer. Whoever gets closest without going over, whoever gets closest without going over will win HOH. If you both go over, whoever is closest will be correct. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give me an answer, okay? Do we in write the it down? 
Yeah, yeah, and you'll write the answer. You'll write your answer down. In the competition C4, there were 30 original words. How many total letters were in the original 30 words? You both have a number? You said the original 30? I did. Do you have an answer, Alex? You ready? Okay. All right. Show me your answers. Alex said 206. Grace said 275. The answer is 207. Alex, you are the final HOH. Wow. Good job, Alex. Woo! Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring Kaylee in. Jeez. Okay, well, um, I feel like it's going to be a similar pitch to the last time I asked you to not boot me. Um, but I know that you and Gray have also had a good relationship this game, but um, I think you and I have had a really trusting relationship. Um, I think – We've managed to help each other a lot. Um, I know you helped me stay in the game. I know I helped you stay in the game. Um, I'm glad to see you as this final HOH. That actually was really exciting to watch. Um, so hopefully it will be you and me battling it out for the final final. Um, but yeah. Congratulations, dude. Thanks. <laughs> Got a hard Thanks, decision Katie. to make. <laughs> Emery? Oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> well, we've, like, played this game together since day one, like, truly. Like, the day zero, like, the minute we were put into rooms, it was kind of like me and you, and we were like, let's be the final two and, like, make this, make it all the way to the end. Um <laughs> I feel like we played this game together like the whole way. Um, I put my neck out there for you, especially in that final eight round with Nathan um, and did my best to get those votes to save you then. Um, and I mean, we've been dreaming of this, so I hope that you decide to take me, but um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. All right, Alex, the floor is yours. Um, do I have, like, any time at all? <laughs> yeah, like, just, you, you, we're live, so not, you know, forever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I would be making this decision tonight. I was pretty confident that Gray was going to win this. Um... And uh, um, oh god, this is really, really hard. Um, sorry, I'm just like, uh, um, oh god, this could be a terrible choice decision. Um, I'm going, oh God, <laughs> I'm going to evict Kaylee. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. You're good, dude. No worries. Thanks, Kaylee. Kaylee. Oh, Guys, oh. you did it. Final two. I'm literally shaking. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. That is, it is hard to do. Alex, I love you, man. Like, <laughs> Oh God. Okay. I can't think right now. <laughs> Guys, that was, that, that was intense. That was that, this is as close as it gets. And you guys, for, for the record, I can say this now in terms of uh, the viewing party's favorite, it is a close race between the two of you. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's like this, this season has been about Alex and gray from my story perspective. Okay. So my question is for both of you. Don't care who goes first, but I want you to describe a particular moment in the game when you felt that you had complete control and one that you felt that you had no control. So whoever wants to go first, I would like to 
few of those responses. We can let Greg go first on this one. Alex just had to talk for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if I had to describe a time in the game where I had like complete control, um, I mean, I did win HOH twice. So I knew that like, no matter what, I was going to be safe. But like in the round of like when I won the final four HOH, like me and Alex had a plan going into that, like starting with like the round of eight, whenever I like helped get the votes together to save Alex, like we made a plan on how the two of us are going to get to the end. And I would say like me winning final four HOH was the time that I felt like most secure in that. Um, the only other time I could think other than that was whenever I bought the veto takeover. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a moment where I felt like I had like a lot of control um, because I had to like talk to people and like get people to send me tokens. So I had to like convince people to like send me tokens so that like our alliance could buy that. Cause like, even though we had an alliance it had only been around for one round. So like I had to like make sure that these people trusted each other, but I felt like I was able to like get the tokens together to do that. The time where I felt like I had the least control was whenever um, Alex went up on the block, like whenever Thomas nominated Alex. Um, and I knew in that moment, like, I felt like I had the, like, the least amount of control. So I knew that I had to do something to shift that, which is why I did what I did after that. Okay. Alex? Um, so the first part of your question, total control. Um, besides, obviously, like, 10 seconds ago, um, choosing which of them, which I think is mm -hmm. kind of a cop-out answer, I think... Um, you never have complete control in this game. I think it's entirely dependent on the relationships you're building and the status quo of everyone else's game at that time. Um, I think, you know, you might be HOH and have two people on the block, but at the end of the day, eight other people are choosing who to evict and it's their choice and you have to um, use your own agency to make them vote the way that you might want them to vote. Um, so, rephrasing it, I guess, to where I felt like I had a lot of control would probably be when um, we saved Shane and Eric went home. Um, I was really keen on keeping Shane that round. And um, I put in a lot of work to steer the vote away. Um, Wait, so when Eric went home? Yeah. Sorry, um, against you. Sorry. Um, brain is rattling right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> and <laughs> um, God, I'm I'm still like really shaking here. I'm really nervous. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah, Eric. Sorry, I have like my little chart here. Um, and um, I remember having a conversation with Robbie and. Robbie was going back and forth about um, who to evict, who to keep, who to, whatever. And Gray and I were talking, and um, this is actually the double eviction vote. I'm sorry, um, because I remember that there was a problem between Thomas and you, Gwen, wanting Jeff, uh, Carson, or Zach to stay, and then there was this whole thing about keeping Shane. Um, and Gray and I were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth about who to keep. Um, and he was team keep Carson. And I was like, we need to keep Shane. Um, and through a lot of, um, subtle maneuvering with language, I sort of steered this onto keeping Shane. Um, and I phrased it in a way to where it became Robbie's move in which case then the next day when we had the, um, uh, jury survey about the, the touchy subjects. Mm -hmm. um, everyone voted Robbie as the in charge person, which was exactly what I was trying to do because I wanted to keep Shane, but I didn't want it to fall on me. So when that two day cycle panned out, I was like, I had complete control over that because not only did I save the person I wanted, I had the fallout on the person that I wanted it to be, which was reflected in your guys' answers on the jury survey. Um, and as for uh, no control, I feel like there's always something you can do. You can always talk. Um, you know, you have the arsenal of weapons per se, right? As to what, what to say, what to do. Um, but I think when I sort of decided to just sit and see what would happen was when I was on the block. Um, 
I did as much as I possibly could to stay. And I got to a point where I was like, I've pitched myself and I'm just going to see what happens here. Um, and it paid off. <laughs> so I hope, sorry, I know that was confusing. My brain is still so all over the place. Right. Come back and in the meantime, we'll bring Nathan in. Hi. What's up, Nathan? Hey, Nathan. Um, first of all, congratulations to you both. I do have a question. You two were a duo throughout the game. I did not know that. That's news to me. Um, so I'm going to pull a little sequester right now and talk at you. Um, nothing bad, nothing bad at all. Um, I think you two played completely different types of games. As Because Alex, for you, I believe you played a very game that was in like the limelight and spotlight. Like you were always on people's, people were always talking about you. They always said like, you're such a great competitor. And it was just Alex, Alex, Alex throughout the most of the game from what I saw. And then uh, no one really seemed to do anything about it. So, I mean, I do commend you for getting all the way here. I mean, you being in final two is like, it's crazy for me because considering you were just kind of like this big figure throughout the game the entire way through. And then I agree, I want to commend you for your more, I think under the radar game. Throughout the entire game, I had no idea what you were doing and like where your head was at. And so for you to be able to pull off that kind of game, because I had no idea you and Alex were together, that's, again, news. Um, but, I mean, as someone who also tends to play an under-the-radar game, I want to commit you because you did it far greater than I could have done. So congrats. Um, Question-wise, I mean, I guess for the both of you, I mean, it's very cliche to say, like, what your biggest move in the game was. Um, but, like, if you had, like, one move that I think would, you know, kind of earn you the win, I guess, what do you think, like, what was your defining move of the game, if that wasn't answered already before? Great, this could be you. Yeah. Okay. Um, first off, thank you, Nathan, for um, for saying that and for um, just commending both of us. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I just, yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, I think my, like, game-defining move, um, it kind of occurred over two rounds. So... The momentum started um, whenever you were on the block and Alex was put up as replacement against you. And I did hate that it was at it was at your expense, right? Because like this game is a zero sum game. So that means that every time someone is like in the positive and like doing something good, it's at the expense of someone else. And you were someone that I really wanted to work with, but you were up against Alex, who you now know was my biggest ally. And I had to do what I could to save Alex because I knew that if I saved Alex, it would further my chance in the game. So during that round, I immediately went, I immediately went to Connor and Connor called me and he was like, did you know that like they were planning on putting Alex up? And he was acting like he had no idea. And like, I truly had no idea that they were gonna put Alex up, but I knew Connor knew it was gonna happen. Even though Connor was like acting like he didn't know it was gonna happen, I knew he knew. So I, told Connor, I was like, Connor, listen, man, like, I know you think Robbie has, like, has your back and is good with you, but Robbie told me that if he won HOH next, he was putting up you and Kaylee, and Nathan told me that if he won HOH, he was going to put up you and Kaylee. So you and Kaylee are not as safe as what you think, and if, um, like, if you were to vote with them and vote Alex out, you and Kaylee are on the block next. I don't even know if those statements were true, but I said them because I needed Alex to stay. So yeah. I convinced them to vote so there would be a 3-2 vote and Alex would stay in the game. And I needed Connor to do that. And I needed the trust that I earned with Kaylee by using her as a pawn earlier to have that happen as well. Um, and because of that, we formed like a new alliance, me, Alex, Connor, and Kaylee. And all of the fallout that happened was on was between Robbie, Shane, and Connor. So like I, I played that move and I thought going into the next round, that double eviction, that I was going to be a target. They had no idea because the whole time I was talking to them, I was like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, I don't know what's happening in this game at all. But I thought I was going to be a target and I wasn't. So the next round, when Kaylee won HOH um, and she put up Robbie, Shane, and Thomas, um, I knew that Shane was going to win that Wheel of Fortune comp. Like, I knew it was going to happen. And I thought it was weird that Shane gave his tokens to Alex because I was like, if Shane gave his tokens to Alex, is he just like giving up? So it's not that I didn't trust Alex then, but I was concerned that if Alex used the veto takeover, that there might be a chance that Shane would come down. Um, because even though you have someone in this game that you trust so much, like you still have to play that game where you're like thinking ahead. 
And so um, I knew we needed that veto takeover, but I wanted to be the one to use it. So I convinced Kaylee and I convinced Alex, like, let me have the tokens and play this veto takeover so we can take this straight to a vote. And so those rounds happened back to back. And it took out the three people that I felt like were a tight three that were going to control this game. And like, if you three stayed in the game, I just felt like I couldn't make it to the end. And like I said, I hated that it was at your expense, but that's part of the game, right? Because it's, like I said, it's a yeah. zero sum game. So it's always going to be, someone's victory is always someone else's loss. And so, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. It does for sure. And so I guess the same thing to Alex. Um, Nathan, um, I think um, like the easy, like again, the easy answer is when, you know, I got myself off the block and like that was a big moment because everything sort of exploded in the house. You know, we separated you and Robbie and X, Y, and Z and everything great talked about. Um, but something I really tried to do from the absolute get go was um, really sort of analyze the situation from the start, who was playing and what was happening and realize that I might not necessarily be the most social person. I might not be the most strategic, um, but I know that something I can control is the amount of effort I put in. And so what I did from the absolute get go, um, from the mo moment Josh was casting me was I did my homework, I did my research. I have been studying for these comps. Like there's no fluke that I just guessed 206 out of 207. I've been studying those C4 words as a possible tiebreaker. He used it in another season. Um, I'm, I'm good at absorbing information and knowledge like that. And so my quote unquote biggest move was being prepared. Um, I know that's not necessarily the flashy answer from someone that you're saying was, you know, the person everyone was talking about, but that's how I approached this game was if you look at the comps that I won, like I won the things Jeopardy where it was about the game. I cleared the entire board. Like I had that down. Um, and that wasn't just luck. Like I put in work um, to be here and it paid off at the right time because I knew those comps were coming up. So when I was on the block at eight and then, you know, made the deal to get through the double eviction, I knew that these comps were coming. And so I knew that I could afford to play a little more free, have the safety of getting probably one comp, two comp, three comps in the end um, and carry myself at the end when all the pressure was sort of on me not to lose. Um, yeah, I, that's my answer. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all hey, I have. You. Yeah, congratulations, you two again. Um, to be honest, it is going to be a hard vote, but um, I think this is a very deserving final two, and you both deserve great props because you both played great games. So good luck tonight. Thanks, Nathan. And Thank Nathan. you very much, Nathan. Yep. All right, let's see if we can actually hear, or if Trey can actually hear us now. Hopefully he can. Trey, can you hear me? Hey, guys, I can hear you now. Yeah, okay. all right. Congratulations. Trey, congrats yeah, on congrats. the engagement. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been, it's been very exciting. Um, so I assume that's her. That is her. <laughs> congrats to you as well. Thank you. All right, so um, I think I'm going to have the opposite question for both of you, if that's okay. Yeah. So, Gray, you were a lot of under the radar and kind of pulling strings behind the scenes. Alex, you were the opposite of kind of being the front man of everybody was looking at you like you were saying, and you just like were kind of the focal point of the game for especially the second half. So since that was the um, – both of y'all's strategies, I'm guessing going in, but how it turned out, why do you think that your respective gameplay was more worthy of – winning the final um, competition from the jury. Uh, Gray can go first if that's okay with Josh. Yeah. Um, so I, to be honest with you, like the first time that I played this game, Trey, was with you. Um, we both played this game together. Um, and that season, like if you remember, I was HOH the second round and i like orchestrated this major blind side of greg wells um and then shortly after that connor won the first like double eviction hoh and like i orchestrated this big like vote swap where like the person the people he wanted gone stayed and those were like huge moves at the beginning of the game and i became the second member of the jury and so i knew coming into this game 
that I wanted to play a better game and I wanted to do better than eighth place because that's what I got last time. And so my strategy this game was adapted based off of that. I said the strategy I used before only got me eighth place. I need a better strategy that's going to get me to that final two. And so coming into this game, I knew that I was going to have to play a game where I surrounded myself with targets so that if like, like whether that was like actual targets or perceived targets, that those people would be taken out first and I would like scoot in afterwards. And the biggest part of my strategy with that was making sure that those people I was around became targets. So like I mentioned on that last um, question with Nathan, that round um, where Nathan got evicted, the final eight, I made sure that round going into the next round, knowing it was a double eviction, that there were at least three people who did not like each other more than they didn't like me. And that was after that round, Robbie, Shane, and Connor had this like massive like falling out and they were just all like mad at each other because they couldn't tell like who flipped on who, advantages were given away. It worked out perfectly because I was like, I'm not the target. I'm not on anybody's radar. So I knew that for me, that was the game I wanted to play coming into this because last time I tried to play that game where I was in control and it didn't work out for me. I had nobody that was willing to flip votes to save me. Um, when I got put up in the final eight, which was the same spot where Alex got put up, my closest ally turned on me. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen to me again. And so that's basically why I chose to play that game. And um, I chose it because it was a game that I respected. Like I really respect a game that's like under the radar when someone's like a puppet master, like controlling the strings. Okay. Um, Trey. I didn't have the luxury of having anything to learn from. I've never played Big Brother before. I've barely seen the show. I've seen two seasons. Um, and so I signed up, me and a group of newbies gonna see what happens. And straight away, I get the biggest cast that Josh has had. I get six returning players and a winner. And I then become this most talked about person and I get myself to the end and I win seven comps. So I just feel, I don't know. I came in originally thinking we were all gonna be newbies and I was going to try to play this game that Gray ended up playing. Um, and for the first part of the game, I was kind of doing that. I knew Connor um, was gonna be this big player here and I didn't want him to go anywhere. Um, when you guys watch these back, you'll see that I proactively had Robbie and Connor right in front of me, surrounded by Quinn and Gray as these shields. But I still became this person that people were talking about. Um, I probably, because of the social game, and I am quite active and I was talking to a lot of people, um, I also have nothing to do. Um, so why I feel that the way I played might be more deserving of this is I played the in your face sort of game with all of you guys with nothing to build that on, no, okay, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I just went for it. And I put in a lot of work. Um, and I think that's kind of ballsy to, you know, having taken out yourself, Quinn, Connor, um, Eric, could have taken out Gray, um, honored that deal. Like I had all the returning players' lives in my hands per se at one point or another. and. I'm I'm proud of that. Like that's to me as like never having played this game before. I'm I'm gonna cut to myself to be honest because I, I think I did a really good job. Um, and yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> All right, Trey, you good? You got anything else? Uh, yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Got a lot. All right, thanks, Trey. We'll, uh, thanks, Trey. See you later. All right. Up next, we have. Oh, I'm gonna get. Yep, oh, he's gone. Up next, we have Shane. What up, Shane? Hey, guy. How are you? Oh, congratulations. First First off, I'm good. Have some wine, but um, I'm good. I got um, mine. <laughs> this was a very interesting game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> um, congratulations on getting a final two. I didn't know you guys were to do also. Hats off to that. That was amazing. Um, 
I was actually shocked, like when I got to jury that everybody had this opinion of Gray was playing this game because I didn't see it. But now hearing everything that you have done, like I'm really impressed. Like the way you stayed under the radar this time was good. So my question to you is, how did you pull that off? So, Shane, first off, thank you. Um, truly, thank you. Um, I, like I said before, like I knew coming into this game, like I was a returner. And so I had to make sure, like I was scared. And I texted Josh about this. This was my biggest hesitation to playing this game again was I texted Josh and I told him, I was like, Josh, I don't want to play this game if like returners are going to be targeted right off the bat. Because like, I feel like I have like some improvements I need to make. And like, I have a game to play that I didn't get to play before. And I don't want to do that if returners are targeted right off the bat. So I knew coming into this game, an under the radar game was the only game that I could possibly play. Like I felt like I was in a spot where like I had to play that game. And so I think that this game, what made it possible for me to play that under the radar game was the social relationships that I built throughout the game. I knew that I was going to have to build relationships and have like a core alliance, but that I was going to have to have people that I was talking to all around the house. And I stayed true to my core alliance the whole game. Like almost every single HOH, someone I trusted or that was in my core alliance was an HOH. And like, I knew that I was going to be safe. So like this whole game, I wasn't put on the block once. I didn't have a single vote cast to evict me. And it's because people I trusted and people who like I was in their ear helping them make a plan was winning HOH or I was winning HOH. And so with that, like, and with the social relationships that I had during rounds, like when Nathan got out in the final eight, I was able to take that and spin it. And in that round specifically, I was able to make Connor the target. Like I talked to Connor and I reached out to Charlie. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Connor, like, we need you to flip this vote. And it's because Shane, Robbie, and Nathan are going to take you out. Like, Shane, Robbie, and Nathan are going to take you and Keely out for, or Kaylee out the first chance you, they get. So we need you. And your best chance of making it further in this game is going to be if you stick with me, Alex, you, and Kaylee. And so he flipped his vote. And he was able to convince you guys that um, he wasn't going to flip his vote. So, like, no advantages were played. And when he did that, the fallout afterwards was like you, Robbie and Connor, like all like at each other. And afterwards, I just remember like texting Josh and being like, how did I get through that? Like I talked to everyone and like was able to like not, it wasn't like no one after that was like, Gray just orchestrated that vote. Like Robbie even messaged me afterwards and was like, you better be thinking about your big move that you're going to make so that if you make it the final two, you'll have something to argue. And I was like, my man, I just made that big move. <laughs> like that was it. And so, um, so yeah, I like, I think that my social relationships were the aspect that helped me like play the game and like be able to play that under the radar game because um, that was something that I really needed in order to pull that off. And my question for you, Alex, is why didn't you take Kaylee? Because that was a guaranteed win. And now you have stiff competition. Yeah. Um, you know, I I took um, Gray at the end because we started the game together, um, first off. So from, you know, I wanted to make sure that the promises I were keeping were the promises I made when I originally made them, because obviously things change as they go. Um, I felt that if I was going to lose, that um, Quinn is a great person to win this game. Um, I I saw the game he was playing, and um, did I just say Quinn? Yes, um, you did. <laughs> sorry. Um, and... Quinn, great game out there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I've, I don't know, Shane. It, it just felt right. It felt right to um, to take Gray. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I know that's not the best answer you want to hear, but that it, it felt like that was the right thing to do. Um, and you know, I always try so to protect I people. See you did this. Yeah, and I tried to protect people the best that I could. Um, you know, I was doing my best whenever an ally that I was really close with was targeted 
to do absolutely anything to make sure that they stayed. Um, throw everything at the wall, see what stuck. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think playing that game and at the final three going against everything I tried to do this season would make sense. Um, so, Grace here. Okay. Shane, you good? Yep. All right, Shane. Thank you very Thanks. much. We'll see you later. All right, next up, we're going to bring um, Kaylee back. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't give you any warning. <laughs> I like just saw the message. It was like whoever's up after Kaylee. I was like, oh, um, let me just plug back in. So, um, hello. I feel like I was just with you guys, so I don't know like what kind of <laughs> I have. I hope you didn't know that this was expected. Um, so I guess what was the moment that you? both feel most proud of like that you were able to accomplish i know you guys have like touched on some of these things but a lot of it is based on like what the outcome is but just what you were able to accomplish with whatever moves you were trying to make what makes you feel like was just that was what you're proudest of i guess alex i'll let you go first on this one um i have two in a way one is um when i um did not go home when i was on the block um, I had so much anxiety coming in and playing this entire game and I kept, you know, I, I knew the game that I was playing, but I, I struggled with confidence in it. And, um, in that moment when, you know, that was a crazy night, we were all there, we were all in the thick of that, especially both, you know, Gray and you, Kaylee. Um, and when I heard that I was safe that night like I was absolutely ec ecstatic like I was like oh my god like I can play this game um like I am doing this I'm not just you know hanging on for dear life here like I am using every tool I have connections and um strategic pro prowess and everything to stay alive um and that felt amazing and then the second thing was straight away in the beginning of this game um I started putting out the idea that there were duos out there. Um, and I was using something that I work do in my everyday life, which is write and language and using the idea of pairs of Matt and Shane, Kaylee and Connor, Robbie and Nathan, and Thomas and Quinn, and always talking about people as blank and blank. And after about a week or so, people kept sending me messages and being like, oh, Nathan and Robbie. And I was like, oh, shoot. I started that. I started putting these things out into the game and they were coming back and I was like, this is working. And like, I was so proud of something so subtle um, that a lot of people just, you know, you type messages and you send it off and that's it. But I was, you know, crafting messages in a way to where there was a long-term gain. And, you know, Thomas and Quinn, I don't believe were ever this like massive power duo in this game, but everyone became like entrenched in this thing and they were always tied together and that was something i was practically doing um so that's my answer <laughs> um Hi. so for me kaylee um i think the answer to that question your question again was the moment that we like were most proud of right yeah based on what you were able to accomplish so i think the moment i was most proud of was so Final eight, when we created our new alliance and we saved Alex, of course, that was like a big moment for me. And then going into the next round, whenever you won HOH and we were able to do the veto takeover and we made final five. Immediately at final five, Alex won HOH, which was part of like, me and Alex had like a game plan from the from like that round. Like the, the minute we save you, here is our outline to get to the end. And one of those things was him, either him or I winning that H HOH. And when the minute he won, Connor like like went to Alex and was trying to like tell Alex that like I was this big threat, I was like orchestrating all this stuff, and like I do think like Connor was right in doing that. Like Connor like saw the moves that I made. He was like one of the only people that saw them because I was talking to him about them. But that was the moment I was most proud of because it showed it showed me that Alex respected the relationship that he and I made during day zero. And that's my, like, my biggest thing, like, I know that I'm probably never going to play like actual Big Brother or Survivor, but like going into the game like this, I was always like, I want to have that person that's like my ride or die, 
that becomes like one of my best friends that like we play this game together. And at the beginning of the game, that was Alex. And so when he won HOH during a final five and he didn't put me up like at all, I knew that like, of course, like the relationship that I had with him, I valued, but it also translated over to the game. Like he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to put me up. And I was able to return that by when I won final four HOH, not putting him up. And so that was like a dynamic that I knew was going to carry me to the end. And that ultimately, like, again, zero sum game, like someone's victory is someone else's loss. Like I had a feeling that coming into the final two, if I won, like me and Alex were talking about us being the final two. So like, if I won, like I would take Alex, if Alex won, he would take me. And so I knew that relationship was something that I had to invest into and that like would help get me to the final two. And so that's what I was most proud of was like coming through those two rounds after like helping save Alex and keeping him around and knowing that he trusted me and I trusted him and both of us riding that wave up into the end on the final two. And I needed that because I obviously didn't win the last HOH. And so I needed someone that was going to take me to the end. That's cute. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, before I go, I do, I'm like really glad that that stuck because, um, obviously I wasn't going to like give it up. I wasn't going to, you know, just be like, eh, pick gray, but I'm really glad that you picked gray in the end. Um, because I think it made it way more interesting. I know no one was planning on voting for me. I think it would have been way too boring of a finale if it was me and Alex. So I'm glad that you guys ended up sticking together and like taking each other to the end because I think it's it's way more interesting to have this sort of really difficult decision to make. So yeah, good job to both of you. I'm really Thanks, proud. Kaylee. Thanks, Thank you Kaylee. very much, Kaylee. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, Mr. Fourth Place, Thomas. What's up, Thomas? Yeah. Hey, how are you good. Good. Awesome. Um, congratulations, first of all, to, uh, for getting here. Obviously, a uh, huge deal. Um, I mean, you guys have been through a, a lot to get through here. And I mean, even like getting as far as I did, like you guys have had to do significantly more and have had, you know, huge game plans and stuff. Um, obviously, since you guys have been working together um, since the very beginning um, and you guys, you know, know a lot of what each other's game is, um, what would you say that your biggest advantage over the other person's game is for like your biggest move that they don't necessarily know about. Um, just, I guess that. Uh, Gray, you can go first this time. So I think that like the biggest like advantage that I have in terms of like me versus Alex, because I do think like in a lot of ways, me and Alex played a very similar game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the biggest advantage that I had over Alex in, in terms of like what I liked about my game was when it came down to it, like, I I wasn't afraid to like send someone home if I needed to send them home. Um, my biggest like strategy in this game like was in a game like this, there's a lot of entropy. Like there's a lot of disorder that's just like filling the air at all times. And so part of my like low key game strategy was anytime someone like spoke up and like there was any kind of like entropy or disorder at all, I was like, they have to go. And so like whenever it came time to get Shane out, I was like, Shane has got to go because if Shane stays, like that puts my game at risk. Like Shane is great at this game and that's going to put my game at risk if he stays. And so like I knew that we had to get Shane out. And like for me, like I don't know if this is just like a flaw in like who I am as a person, but like for me, it was like I knew I was like, we have to get Shane out. And that like that's that. Like I didn't even think twice about it. But Alex, like, in a lot of ways was, like, a moral compass for me in this season, too, because, like, Alex, like, he had a really good social game that, like, was better than my social game. Like, his social game, he built good relationships with people. And so, like, for me, I was ready to pull that trigger on people at times, and I didn't hesitate at all. I was like, if they've got to go, they got to go. Um, if there are risks to my game, if there are risks to, like, causing disorder in this house, they've got to go. But... Um, yeah, does that make sense, Thomas? Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Exactly. So, Thomas, it's it's the part of the game that that I'm proud of that Gray did not know about. Is that um, the way that Gray answered it was more of what your advantages are over his game, essentially. So the way he answered it was more of what your his advantages over you. So essentially, the same. Um, oh, this is tricky. Um. Mm -hmm. I think 
I think it, I would say that um, from the absolute get go on day one, not day zero, um, mm -hmm. I proactively made sure that I had strong, strong relationships with people outside of the, my of our room, um, room four. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I knew at the end of the day that there was going to be this war about room four, room two, room three, room one, whatever. And it's not a coincidence that up until when, you know, this plan to backdoor me came about at eight, that I was just never touched um, from that. The people that were in power and that were winning comps, I was closely aligned with Shane from day one. Sorry, how? Um, Shane from day one, I was right in there with Shane, always trying to protect him, always making sure that we had each other's backs. Um, when it was Matt and Shane on the block, um, fighting for Matt to go home, um, strategically to free up Shane to be closer with me, but also I wanted Shane in this game. You know, when, when Dale were at home, like I fought for people, um, even when sometimes they didn't fight for me. Um, you know, in our instance, like, you know, mm. you, you went against me and tried to put me up, you did put me up and, yeah. I think, I think I was able to forgive and, you know, um, repair relationships when mm -hmm. needed. And, you know, after um, the, the double eviction, I think it was when Shane stayed and Daryl, you know, left all the chats and, you know, all the room four and we were all like, what's going yeah. on? I was talking to Daryl that whole night. And I knew that like, just because, you know, he had a moment that something maybe didn't go his way that like, that was a relationship that I wanted to still continue yeah. and still fight for him and have him his place be in this game be important um and you know i did that with everyone um mm. and i always tried to make sure that people felt heard and that it was never just alex is making this choice it was always consciously talking about okay well like we're a group here what are you going to do i might be hoh but like you guys are voting yeah um and i always wanted to make people feel included mm. um despite still being this person that was, you know, front and center per se, you know, starting the jury off and getting those touchy subject answers could have been a complete game changer and could have gone home immediately. But yeah. despite having those connections and um, just by having those targets put on me of the nicest deserves to win X, Y, and Z, um, people still kept me in the game because of the, the position I put myself in. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Um, do I have time for one like quick question? Go, go for it. Um, well, first of all, Gray, do you think that Alex would have stated this game um, whenever he was on the block if it weren't for you? I don't think so. Okay. And that's just because of your move with Connor? Yeah. Like, I, I went to Connor and I told him, I was like, listen, like, Shane um, or, like, Robbie and Nathan, like, so that HOH that day was C4, the one that you won. Yes. And like me and Alex like wanted you to win that one. Yeah. And so um, we wanted you to win it because we knew we would be safe, right? But yeah. so <laughs> I, I went to Nathan. Um, yeah, funny to look back at that now, right? Um, yeah. Well, I, I, de I definitely, looking back at that challenge, I, I, I realized that was kind of a, um, a bit of a, a cruel move, shall we say. But Yeah. Hey, so I went to Nathan knowing like, <laughs> I knew that like I couldn't be at my phone all day long because mm -hmm. like I was like working and I was like I can't I can't be at my phone to answer these questions. So I went to Nathan knowing like Alex had told me Nathan really wants to win this one. And I was like, yeah. Nathan, like I know we haven't talked a lot and we haven't played a lot, but like I'm willing to like to like let you win this and like not answer anymore and make a deal with you if you keep me off the block. Yeah. And that was strategic because I wanted to know who who he was gonna put up so I could use it later. And he was like, Who do you think you would put up? And Alex had told me, like, oh, like, Nathan seems like he's targeting Kaylee and Connor. So I was like, what do you think about Kaylee and Connor? And he was like, that's exactly who I'm thinking about targeting. Mm -hmm. Then Robbie told me that he wanted to target Kaylee and Connor. And so that's why, like, whenever I went to Connor during that round, I told him, I was like, listen, like, Robbie and Nathan say they're not working together at all. But, like, they both told me your names. Like, yeah. they both told me that they want you two out. And so I was like, Connor, you have to flip this vote so that me, you, and Kaylee vote to save Alex. Because otherwise, like, you're sticking with Robbie, Shane, and Nathan, and you're going to be at the bottom of the pecking order there. And yeah. so, like, that was, like, the move where I was like, 
like I truly don't think if I had done that, like I told Alex that whole night, I was like, Alex, like I'm putting my neck out there for you. And I'm trying to do this in a way where there's not going to be a target on me afterwards. And it seems like it paid off. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and then for you, Alex, um, one of what I, cause I, you played a, a great, super strong game. One of what I consider the weakest in your game, or at least whenever I started to distrust you a little bit was whenever you were, you were HOH and you put up Trey and Kaylee without talking to um, me or from what I, I talked to everyone else in room four, that you didn't consult room four um, as much during that. And so was there any to that or um, was that just um, like, what was behind that? Um, I did not um, proactively not talk to you guys. My yeah. um, entire thought process of putting up Trey and Kaylee was mm-hmm. I needed a returning player to go home. And it was yeah. not going to be Thomas, Gray, or Quinn. Yeah. And then that left Trey and Connor. Well, I was in an alliance with Connor. Connor mm-hmm. had given me final two. Um, yeah. <laughs> I see you, Connor. <laughs> um, and um, I needed a second person to be on that block um, mm-hmm. that was going to handle it okay and be someone yeah. that would be saved. And when Kayla had just been on the block, it just completely fell into place where Trey was yeah. that person by default. Um, I was aware that there was this, you know, returning player alliance from Quinn and X, Y, and Z. Um, how active it was, I don't know. And I, it didn't really matter. Um, yeah. You know, so perhaps in that moment, I was probably being a little cautious of being like, guys, I'm putting up Trey because I didn't want you guys to get spooked. But I was mm-hmm. always trying to proactively make sure that there was never a point where it was even returning players and newbies. Yeah. Um, and I always wanted there to be a little bit of a buffer. Um, so making sure that Trey went home and then obviously, you know, he fought for his life like crazy. And I was yeah. sat in for hours like, oh my God, no, Trey has to go home. Like, I feel <laughs> Bailey, like he's not going anywhere. Um, and then he went home obviously 8-0. Um, yeah. So that was that. I, I didn't try on purpose to leave you guys out. Um, mm. I think it was just one of those things where I was really focusing on those relationships with those other room members like Shane. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just, I probably, I didn't come to you guys as much. Um, in yeah, that yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, thanks you guys so much. Um, you guys, congratulations again for being here. Um, good luck to-, um, to Thanks, Thomas. Thank thanks, you, Thomas. Thomas. Next up. Daryl. Daryl. So I want to say, uh, Room 4, I'm glad two of us are representing the final two. That's Heck good. So I guess my question would be, since I know I've had a stronger relationship with Alex than you, Gray, so was that part of y'all's plan pretty much? To, like for him to have me in his pocket like that? Um, no. Um, no way, shape, or form. I built my relationships for my game. Um Trey played his game, or Gray played his game, I played my game, um, but we communicated on strategic decisions. Um, maneuvering relationships like that was never something where we were like, Gray, go and be best friends with this person, and I'll be best friends with this person. That was never a thing. I connected with you immediately because you and I were in the same room, and we were down two, three in numbers. I wanted to play with you. I saw that you were a stand-up guy in this game, and then when you were... Um, revealed to be a bit more vocal (laughs) Um, that I saw that was a great opportunity to use you in that respect of, hey, if there's going to be an argument, it might be Daryl and Shane. It might be Daryl and Nathan. Um, And I can still have a relationship with you and work with you. um, But there's a strategic reasoning behind that as well. Um, But there was never an intent to use that relationship entirely as uh, we're just going to like take this person, this person. That was, that was never a thing. Uh, And I guess another question. Uh, Sorry. No, you good. Oh, I was just going to say like to piggyback off of that. Like, yeah. Like I don't want you to feel like the relationship that like we had, that you had with me or that you had with Alex was like strategic in any sense of the game. Like, yes, on day zero, like me and Alex like hit it off really well. And I knew that there was something there. But the other person that I hit it off well with on day zero was you, Daryl. And like, I knew that like, like you could, like, I'm excited for you to join the viewing party after this so that you can see the videos I filmed. Because like in the videos I filmed, like for the first week of the game, like I was talking about you and all of them. Like you were the person that I was talking about because I was like, like, I, I feel like Daryl's going to be a good ally for me. And like Daryl and Alex and I are going to be able to be like 
maybe like a solid three, like getting through like this first part of the game. And so like, it's not that I didn't trust Quinn and Thomas because I did. And like, yeah, we had a returners alliance where we were trying to keep each other safe for as long as we could. But I also felt like I needed to make sure that I was in the majority with you two. And like, it's like the relationships I had with you two individually were like the ones that I was like, these are the ones that I'm investing into this whole game. Like, these are the ones that, like, these are it. These are the truth. Like, these are the ones that I'm going to, like, invest into from day one. All right. I think I'm good. Thank you very much, Thanks, Daryl. Daryl. Yeah. Thanks, Daryl. All right. Two more. You guys are doing a great job. So, two more. And we'll save the best for last. So, that means next would be... Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. What's Robbie? Up, Robbie? Whoa, 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 whoa. I should be going last then. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Robbie, floor is yours. Let's go, Matt. I got some notes here, so I'm not, I'm not texting, but I want to make sure I get my stuff right. I, he I keep hearing you guys bringing up my name, so I guess I could say I played a pretty influential game. <laughs> pretty popular. Uh, <laughs> going, back to what Nathan, going back to what Nathan said, we have two very different gameplays here. We have a social butterfly in Alex and the silent assassin in Gray. You guys both played amazing games, so I'm really happy to see here, see both of you guys here tonight. But, Alex, I want you to take a deep breath right now. Take a deep breath. I can tell you're nervous. Why do you think I can tell that? <laughs> because we've talked this entire game. <laughs> exactly. And I am nervous. <laughs> so, exactly. So one of my questions for you is, you're one of the nicest guys I've ever, like, met. I got a lot of friends. You're extremely nice. You were my best friend in the house. How many other best friends did you have? Um, like you, no one. You and I talked really? on, an, on a friend level that I didn't talk with anyone else. Gray and I talked a lot of strategic moves and um, common interests, and we have a great relationship. Um, mm -hmm. But you're the person leaving this game that, like you said, like best friend in the house. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll have your back in everything moving forward. 100% hands an down. That's a good answer. So that goes outside the game. Alex was my best friend in the house and just proves his loyalty. I got another, I got another question for you. I want you, Alex, to tell me why Gray shouldn't win. Not why you should win. Only why Gray shouldn't win. I want you. I want, I'm asking this because, like I said, you're the. You want to see me be mean? <laughs> extremely nice. I want to hear you say, why shouldn't Gray win? Not why you should win. Why Gray should not win? Um, Gray should not win because um, when push comes to shove, the strategic decisions that were made were entirely things that I set into place. You know, you're saying Gray was a silent assassin and talking about how he. Um, went to Connor and said that Robbie and Nathan wanted to put up Kaylin Connor. Who did Ro mm -hmm. Gray say told him that information? Me. I had so much information coming in and I was revealing certain information at certain times to certain people. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel that as good of a game as Gray played, and I feel like Gray played um, a great observant game where he was in everything, I feel mm -hmm. like the actual decision making was not him at every moment in this game. I don't think it was me at every moment in this game, but I feel like I had a lot more agency from day one to an hour ago where I chose to kept keep Gray in this game. Um, and I feel a lot of times the conversations Gray and I had, I was so conscious about making it feel like we were a duo in the decision-making. Um, and a lot of times playing dumb in terms of strategy where Gray would say, oh, let's keep this person as a shield. And I'd be like, what do you mean by that? Um, well, I knew exactly what he meant by that, but I had to make this feel that we were working together where everything coming into play were things that either um, he thought he was coming up with um, or not. Um, and yeah, I lost my train of thought. So there you go. Oh, good answer. So I asked you that because I want you to take some pride in your game. Gray's coming up with some really good answers, especially with yeah. helping get me out. I want to hear you say, you know, I was part of that. Don't let Gray take full credit there. Anyways, yeah. done with you, Alex. Good job. <laughs> well, my my questions for you. After hearing tonight, I'm very impressed with your game. And a, a quote from you saying 
I, I forget the exact quote, but remember you messaged me saying, I'm way out of my league when when you when you said that to me. Do you remember saying that to me? Oh, I completely remember. It that was, was like a great quote. Time. Like I knew exactly what was going on, but I told you that I had no idea. Great, very good quote. That's why you're the silent assassin. But I got a question for you. So, uh, after me and Shane left, so after that HOH, uh, Kaylee won it. You guys were down to the final five. Alex won that HOH. Let's switch things up. Let's say you won the HOH. Who would have been your target? It still would have been Connor. Still would have been Connor. Okay. Yeah, I knew, and the Robbie, the reason for that is because I knew that you had influence in this house. Mm -hmm. um, you were someone who was vocal, and I've said this before, Robbie, like my strategy the whole game was controlling that entropy, like controlling that disorder. And like I saw in that round that you and Shane, you guys had, you guys had stuff to say. And you guys, mm -hmm. you guys had important things to say to influence the game. And I knew like that you were going that you you had told me Connor's playing this whole game. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was a little bit like hurtful because I was like, Robbie doesn't know that like I yeah. actually like yeah. controlled that whole vote, but I didn't want you to know because I didn't want you to flip that on me. And so I was like, I have to like stick with this. And so my next vote would have been Connor, like my next target would have been Connor anyway, because like that's who like when it got to final five and me and Alex made our plan, that's who our first target was. Like Perfect. we had to get Connor out in order to make sure that we both had a chance. That's all I need to hear. You need to get that snake out. Anyways, the next question is, all right, we're in the final three now as of an hour ago. Gray wins HOH. One answer. I don't want to hear an explanation. Who do you take? One, one name, Alex or Kaylee? No explanation. Alex. Really? You're a teacher, right? Yeah. So let's say I'm your teacher and I could say, hey, Gray, I'm going to give you a free A. You don't got to study or do any homework the rest of the year. Or, you know, if you could work really hard for your A, you got to study, do extra homework. What would you take? I'm the kind of student who's going to study and do the extra homework because I know that, like, I'm going to prove myself at the end of it. Uh, Josh, I can't curse, but that's a little BS. I'm taking the free A. That's all I got. Good luck to you guys. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks. Connor Mills, close us out. Oh, God. Hello, Connor. Oh, guy. <laughs> What's up? Congratulations, first of all, on both of you making Final Two. I was really, really hoping that two people from Mathalme would make it to Final Two. So I'm glad that it's not just one of you. Um, first of all, Gray, I completely side with you on your answer to Robbie just a second ago. <laughs> like, I really do think you're the guy that would step up and be like, no, I'm not taking the free A. Um, so just commenting on that. Thank um, you. I've got a couple different questions. First of all, and this is, I've, all my questions are for both of you. I'm not essentially getting questions for Alex and then questions for Greg. So for both of you, how do you feel sitting in the final two? Do you want uh, to hear? Nervous as fuck. <laughs> Connor. <laughs> um, sorry for the expletive, Josh. Um, okay. But I mean, I I started this game and like I came here to win, um, and immediately this game was completely not what I thought it was going to be. You were here as a winner. There were returning players, and I was like, oh my god, I'm totally in over my head here. Um, but I knew that I could put in the work and that I could get myself here. I could work with people. I could learn this game on the ground um, and get here. And like, I'm, I'm so happy I'm here, but like two is not enough. Like I came to win. Um, I know that there's this thought of, oh, I should have just taken Kaylee. Um, but I did this entire game working hard and going to the end and having to beat Gray would be, you know, the chair on the top there. Um, so hopefully we're not done yet. <laughs> Same question for me, Connor. Same question. So um, getting to the final two is like, it's, it's like a, it's a duality thing, right? So like, I feel like really great about the fact that I'm in the final two because it means the, the strategy that I came into this game ready to play, the strategy that you and I talked about one night on the phone at like midnight, um, it means that it worked. 
it means that I got here and the moves that I wanted to make and the way I wanted to play this game, it worked. It means that all the work I put into this paid off. The relationships I built paid off. Um, the friendships I made paid off. The comps I won and the moves I made paid off because I was able to bury myself afterwards. Um, because like there were moments where like I should have been the person that people were like, Gray like just did that, like he's the target. But then afterwards, it was like I was like a turtle, like I just like went back in my shell and like no one saw it. And so it means that it worked. But on the other side of that, like being in the final two, like in my everyday life, like Robbie's question just exposed, like I am the person, like I'm not going to take the free A. Like I'm going to work for something. I want to prove myself. Like I want to, I want to be great. And I want to prove that I can do that. But in a game like this, and like I mentioned to a couple of people before, like a, a game like this, it's a zero sum game. Like me being in this position means that there are nine other people who couldn't be in this position. Really, there's 16 other people who couldn't be in this position. And so the person I am in real life is someone who's very, very loyal and very, very like true to other people. And in a game like this, getting to the final two means that like I had to put that aside for to a degree for a little bit to make sure that I was able to get here. And like there is a part of this where I'm like, yeah, that like that's that's rough. Like that, like having to deal with that and deal with the fact like that you did that is like something that, that you really have to consider. But at the end of the day, it's a game. Like it is a game. And I did what I had to do to make sure that I had the best resume and the best like case coming into this and the best argument prepared to win this. So like coming into the final two, the words I would say that I feel are nervous, but also prepared. Okay. Um, Josh, am I on a time limit? Can I ask like- no, Go for questions? it, go, go for it. Okay. So my second question, what qualities do you think a winner of the game of Big Brother should have? And how do you embody those qualities? Or how do you fight against those qualities? Great, you can go first this time. So I think that a winner of Big Brother needs to be someone who controls the narrative, right? Like the whole game, like there needs to be a narrative that you somehow impact. And in this game, I feel like with the exception of the one round where Alex went up, I knew what was going to happen every single time someone was HOH and every single time someone was going up. Every single time. And so, like, yeah, there were times where, like, me and Alex were talking strategy and Alex was putting forth strategy. But there were also times that I was putting forth strategy with Alex, like, that I was telling him things I think that we should do to make sure the game goes forward. I mean, for instance, that one round, I, like, the round I keep coming back to is the round where literally, like, we saved him. We kept him here. And that was something where, like, the whole strategy for that round, we controlled that. Like, that was, like, an idea in my mind. And I was like, I don't know if if this can happen, but we're going to work as hard as we can to make sure it does. And so someone that wins the game of Big Brother, I think has to be someone that controls the narrative, uses the information that other people give them, like uses the information with the relationships they have to actually apply action to it, and somehow is able to make sure that they still can make it through without having a target on them. And I feel like that's the game that I played. That's the game that I wanted to play coming in. I wanted to play as close to a winner's game as possible. And for me, I knew that would be, have to be a game where I controlled the narrative. I used information to influence the outcomes. And I was able to sink back and make sure that other people were targeted and people underestimated me. And Alex, same thing to you. Um, what qualities do you think a winner of this game should have? And how do you embody or fight against those qualities? I think you've got to have balls, um, which I think I had this entire game. Um, I think you need to have the ability to question everything. Um, Connor, every single thing you sent me, I believe maybe like 2% of it. Those videos that you would send me, like fake, right? The drunk one? There you go. On day three of this game, I sent a diary confessional saying, Connor thinks he's got me as this naive, bright-eyed young guy trying to play Big Brother for the first time. I saw immediately what you were doing, and I was like, I'll be Connor's little boy. Like, this is fine by me. Um, and I said straight away on day three, I said, I will get Connor out of this game. It might not be now, but when the timing is right. And I did it when the timing was spot on. 
Um, Robbie tried to make that move on me. And I kept telling him, I was like, Robbie, you're doing this move too early. Like, you're going to go home next. Like, there's nothing anyone can do about it, and you're out. Um, Gray talked about um, controlling the narrative. And I think, I think that is important, but I think what's potentially more important is making that narrative. And I think that's something that I did from the get-go. You know, I had my, my hands in everyone's pockets, um, per se, to where the conversations that were coming up, like I talked about with Kaylee, with these pairs, were things that I was putting into place. So while a narrative might be controlled, it was the narrative that I was creating in this game. And so there was always these things about, oh, Robbie's the person in charge. Well, the reason he was in charge was because I put the blame of that move onto him. And immediately the next day we did the survey, Robbie's in charge, boom, check. Um, and, you know, I feel, um, what were the qualities? Yeah, I feel, I feel you need to um, know that at any given point, you know a percent of what's happening and it's about understanding how to maneuver the conversations that you are not in. It's great if you're in the conversation and that's great, but there's always seven other conversations going on that you're not aware of. And it's making sure that you either find out about them, that they don't matter, or that your conversation is the one that sticks. And that's what I did. Okay, so I have two more questions. And I say that because both of y'all talk too much. Y'all talk way too much. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to hear it. Okay. So my last two questions. First question. I want you to describe your game in one sentence. One sentence. It can't be a run-on sentence saying, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this. I want one sentence, and that's it. I was going to give you guys like 15 seconds to think about this one. Cause I feel like yeah. <laughs> but when you're ready, you can go ahead. When you're ready, you can go ahead. I'll go ahead and go. Go for it. I played an under the radar game that controlled the narrative of this game. And Alex, whenever you are ready, no rush. Yeah, sorry. I'm thinking. Um, I played the game that mattered in that moment to make sure I survived that vote and the vote following. Okay, that's fair. My last question is, because I'm the last juror asking questions, right, Josh? I believe so. Okay, yeah. this is just kind of a toss up fun question because uh, okay. we've been through a lot tonight. So congrats to both of you. Um, my last question, if you had to describe your game with a song title or an album title, and it has to be a real one, you can't make it up. <laughs> if you have to describe your game with a song title or an <laughs> album title, what would it be? This one's harder than the last one, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I'm just having fun at this point. I think I've got one. Go for it. Um, I would use the song Pray You Catch Me, which is the first song off of Beyonce's hit album Lemonade, um, because I felt like this whole game, like people would need to pray that they caught me because it turns out they didn't. And so I would use the song Pray You Catch Me because I felt like I played that game where people would need to catch me and I somehow avoided it. Alex, if you've got one, go ahead. I do. I'm just, I just want to double check something. I would say, okay, first off, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, so sorry, that's where I'm going. Um, I would say Reputation, the album, um, because um, 
there will be no further explanation. There was only reputation. Okay, that's fair. Um, so just final statement from me. Um, first of all, congratulations to both of you. I really honestly think both of you have played a winner's game. And if there could be two winners, it would be you two in the end. Um, obviously, because you're both sitting there. But um, I say that to say, I know how hard it is to get here, and I know how hard it is to win. Um, and while both of you deserve this win, I think there's only one of you that really, 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 really deserves the win. Um, so congratulations to both of you. Um, and good luck on these final jury votes. Thanks, Thanks Connor. Connor. All right, guys, I'm going to give you each like a 15 second or so, whatever, like final statement. Um, we'll do this one random. Gray, I have a one or a two behind my back. Which is it? Two. It's a one. Alex, you want to go first or second? Second. <laughs> Gray, you're up. So I think that you should vote for me because every single vote in this game, I voted the correct way. There's not a single time that I went up on the block. There's not a single vote that I had a, time, a, a vote, a single time that I had a vote cast to evict me. And it wasn't because like it, it wasn't because I wasn't ready to work if I got put up on the block. It's because I never had to worry about getting put up on the block. That's the kind of game that I played. I had big moves. I had two really big moves in the round of eight and then in the round of seven going into that double eviction. And I rode those out until the end. And I hope that you see that. I hope that you see that I was able to like make big moves and then kind of like sink back in. Um, and I hope that you appreciate the game that I played as the silent assassin. Thank you, Gray. Alex? Um, I think I should get your guys' votes because um, I really learned this game from day one to now. Alex on day zero was extremely anxious, more than I am now, um, and didn't really know what he was getting himself into. And I built my game day by day um, and became this apparent you know, threat that you guys were proactively trying to backdoor. Um, and despite having, you know, all this, um, these targets per se at me, like I got myself here. Um, I fought for it. Um, you know, oh God, I'm having complete brain farts <laughs> right now. Um, and, you know, I might not be the quote unquote best talker right now. Um, and a lot of that's because I'm nervous and it's because I know how hard I played. Um, and I feel that um, there was a reason you guys were after me and not Gray. Um, I feel that, you know, I, I, you know, I won more comps than anyone and I had an amazing social game and I fought for people and I was in on every single vote. Even when I was on the block, I knew that I was going to be staying because of my connection with Gray and Kaylee, which was so important to my game. Um, that despite telling people that we only talk about painting, we actually talk strategy. Um, and I always voted the right way as well. Um, and, you know, pick your poison. <laughs> All right, guys, you've done your job. Easter basket votes in. I wrote them all down. We're bringing Gray and Alex. We're going to go here. We'll bring Max in. Hey. I wish I had the tribal music, but this is Big Brother. So, you want to play it? no. You've done it. <laughs> to, let me say to everybody, to everyone watching, everyone, I'm going to do the full Jeff. This was easily the best season we've ever done. Everyone played this game, pedal to the metal from day one. Um, Alex, you just made a really, like, I I'm proud of the decision you just made to take Gray. Like, that's awesome. Like, Gray, I think if you had taken Alex, I would have been just as proud. I think, like, you two deserve to be here, and I'm very glad that one of you is going to win this game and that one of you is going to be the runner-up. Like, I I I'm very proud of both of the games you played. I can't wait to talk more about it. This and now, an excellent finale. All like, excellent finale. Both of you brought it. We've had. The jury brought it. This was awesome. I can't wait for you guys to go back and see everything. And I will read the votes. Here we go. Music. Vote number one goes to Gray. Hey, I hope this is okay that I'm just sending a video because I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, but I'm going to be driving for the next hour and a half, so I can't really do anything else. So I vote for Gray to win 
Big Brother Hometown Season 8. Vote number two. Alex. Real tough vote. Very close game. Both the guys did amazing, but I vote for Alex to win this game. One vote Gray. One vote Alex. Vote number three. Gray. My winning vote is for... Gray. Two votes Gray. One vote Alex. Alex, we're tied again. It is with great, great pleasure that I vote Alex to win Big Brother Hometown's game. Next vote. Alex. I'm going to vote for Alex. That's three votes Alex, two votes Greg. Next vote. Great price. My vote for BBH Season 8 winner is Gray. We're tied again. Three votes Gray, three votes Alex. Next vote. Gray. Out of all the people in this game, you two made it to the end. And I am so proud of both of you. Um, I am glad that one of you two is going to be in the winner circle. And I think that both of you deserve to be there. Absolutely, 100%. With that being said, my vote for a winner tonight goes to my boy, Gray. It's four votes Gray, three votes Alex. Next vote, Alex. Tough vote here, but I'm giving my vote to the overall player from start to finish, and my vote is Alex. It's four to four. We're going down to the final vote. <laughs> and the winner <laughs> of Big Brother Hometowns season eight. Congratulations to. I woke up this morning thinking that I knew who I wanted to win this game. And then I wasn't so sure. And then jury questioning happened. And now I know. I hardly knew a single thing about this person's game throughout it, and I think that says a lot. Alex, you should have taken Kaylee. My vote to win is Gray. Gray Price, you have just won. Big Brother Hometowns <laughs> Season 8. Congratulations. Good job, Gray. Wow. Oh, my God. Gray, I both of you, honestly, so proud. Alex, and there was... The fact that it's, the fact that it's a 5-4 vote. Like that, that explains it right there. Like that's like, oh my God, Alex, like this has been like, you played such a great game. And like, it's like, I told you going into this round, like I felt like me and you were like Tony and Sarah, like in the survivor finale. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, no matter like if I win or if you win, like I was going to be like crying either way. So, um, oh God. I just that's Alex, really hard to do. To I do want to say, I want to say this to Alex because this I think this is important. That I loved your game. I loved your game. There was one thing I was really critical of, and we can talk about it later, but I think that you taking Gray to the end here wipes away everything there. And like for me, it like this may be like overthinking it, but I think it showed some growth, like as a player and as a person. So like I'm proud of that. And if that doesn't mean anything, then that's fine too. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. All right, guys. Thank you, everyone, for a great season. We are going to ramp up for another one because that, that was awesome. Um, I'm going to fire up a Zoom call for everyone that wants to hang out. If you're still watching, that's in the cast, not like anyone. No. Um, <laughs> and um, we can all hang out have a good time. Great. Um, first player uh, ever in a mixed season to win as a returner. Um, never on the block. Never cast a vote against you. You play, you, you're, maybe you were the Tony, maybe the Sarah. I don't know. Congrats to both of you. I'm going to get you guys off here and close this out. And um, good night, everybody. Kind of. Good night to them. Wow. Can I just say, Gray was my winner pick, and I have correctly picked the winner both times that I posted this game. I am so excited. <laughs> um, this was a great night. A lot of fun. Lots of ups and downs. And, uh, Wow, I need a minute to decompress. So thank you everyone for watching. This was this was great. I haven't looked at the comments, but um
that it was really fun. So, all right, guys. Six congrats there. from – yeah, we season seven winner says congrats, Gray. Did I say seven, six? I'm tired. Um, all right. Good night, everybody. Sign, uh, apply for season nine. There, It's in the viewing party. Players, hop in the viewing party. See the fun. We're going to fire up a Zoom or something here. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night.